Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to look at the link reaction for your A-level biology. Now there are lots of steps to this and they link to the previous videos and they link to the next videos because it is the link reaction. So make sure you take this slowly, make sure you make careful notes, copying down the names of things really carefully. So we're going to have a look at aerobic respiration proper now. So we're going to, uh, we've done glycolysis and that obviously doesn't happen in the mitochondria, it happens in the cytoplasm. And now we're going to look at the link reaction, which is the first stage of respiration to happen inside the mitochondria. And so if we're looking at kind of this diagram that we looked at before, the link reaction is happening here. So it's just inside the mitochondria, it's happening in the stroma here. And so let's have a quick look at mitochondrial structure and how it's adapted to carry out the functions. So first up we have the outer membrane which controls the entry and exit of substances. There's an outer and an inner membrane remember because mitochondria are double membraned organelles same as uh, the nucleus and uh, chloroplasts and that's because we think that mitochondria like chloroplasts potentially were once free-living prokaryotic organisms that then got absorbed into a cell and that's how we ended up with eukaryotic cells which is part of the endosymbiotic theory. Okay, so next we have the cristae. So the inner membrane is actually folded internally to form these cristae, which is basically just the name of the folds. One crista, many cristae is the plural. And the reason this is an adaptation is because if we folded this membrane, it means we've got a larger surface area for enzymes um, that make ATP, so the ATP synthase enzymes, and also for the ETC, the electron transport chain, which is like in chloroplast embedded in the membrane. And so the more membrane we have, the larger the surface area to carry out these parts of the reactions, which are needed for oxidative phosphorylation, which we'll talk about in a couple of videos time. And then we have the matrix, which is the fluid inside the mitochondria. This is, again, like the cytoplasm inside a cell, like the nucleoplasm inside the nucleus, like the stroma inside a chloroplast, it's the fluid inside and so it contains all the enzymes that we need for respiration. It also contains the mitochondrial DNA, so this little small loops of DNA, ribosomes, 70S again, small ribosomes in there, and some other proteins and fatty acids. So it contains everything we need to do the reactions of respiration that happen in the matrix, which we're going to look at some of those today. Now just a quick recap on some of the enzymes we need and we're going to talk about these today. There's going to be dehydrogenase enzymes in there, so they remove hydrogen. There's going to be decarboxylase enzymes in there, they remove carbon dioxide. And then obviously we need our coenzymes as well, which we've talked about. So we're going to need some NAD and some FAD as well. And they will all be in the matrix because they are needed for the reactions of photosynthesis that happens in the matrix, which we're going to look at today. Okay, so the purpose of the link reaction, which is what we're going to look at today, is it links the glycolysis reactions to the Krebs cycle, which happens inside the mitochondria, and obviously the glycolysis reactions happen outside. It's what happens once we've got past that first stage. So if you remember our little diagram that we were looking at before, we've looked at glycolysis. So now we're going to look at the link reaction. And it literally is the job of taking the products or getting the products of glycolysis into the Krebs cycle. And that's what the link reaction's job is. It does not produce any ATP. Um, it just literally is like a transfer point. So if you remember, obviously we had glycolysis and the purpose of glycolysis was to split. Remember, it means splitting glucose. So what happened in glycolysis is we had glucose and at the end of it, we had two molecules of pyruvate. And so the point of the link reaction is to get this pyruvate from being outside, it goes into the mitochondria and then it's getting it to a point where it can enter the Krebs cycle. Okay, so we're starting with pyruvate, and pyruvate, if we remember, is a three carbon molecule. So the first thing that's going to happen to our pyruvate is it's going to have carbon dioxide removed, which is obviously known as decarboxylation. We then also need to remove some hydrogen from our molecule. So we've decarboxylase, and with the decarboxylase enzyme, we've removed carbon dioxide. We're also going to remove some hydrogen. And that hydrogen is going to be donated to NAD, and so therefore it becomes reduced NAD. So 
dehydrogenase enzyme has removed hydrogen, which means that we've done some oxidation. This can sometimes therefore be known as oxidative decarboxylation because we've oxidized and we've decarboxylated at the same time pretty much. And that gives us our two carbon molecule. So we've lost the carbon remember because it's gone to carbon dioxide and we've now got a molecule called acetate. Then we need to be able to take that acetate to the Krebs cycle. And so we use a coenzyme that we've mentioned already, coenzyme A. So coenzyme A binds to the acetate and forms a molecule called acetyl-CoA. So it's just the acetate group bound to a coenzyme and therefore it's called acetyl-CoA. And that is the link reaction, that's it. So realistically, you need to know that pyruvate gets decarboxylated uh, and also oxidized and it produces one reduced NAD for that, and then it binds to the coenzyme A, which is going to take it to the Krebs cycle. So we have to remember that the link reaction happens twice per glucose molecule, because one glucose molecule makes two pyruvate molecules in glycolysis. So what do we get out of our link reaction? So per glucose, bear in mind, remember that's what I'm doing here. So per glucose, remember it happens twice per glucose, we get two acetyl-CO enzyme A, and that goes to the Krebs cycle. We get two molecules of carbon dioxide. They're gonna diffuse out of the mitochondria because remember, they are a waste product. So if we're an animal cell, they'll diffuse out of the mitochondria and then they're gonna diffuse out of the cell and then eventually they'll diffuse into the blood where they'll obviously be removed. Or if we're a plant cell, we're gonna diffuse out the mitochondria. We may then, the carbon dioxide might then diffuse into the chloroplast to be used, or it, again, it might leave the cell. And then we get two reduced NAD, which are going to travel to the electron transport chain in order to help us produce ATP. So we don't produce any ATP directly here through substrate level phosphorylation like we did in glycolysis. Uh, we're just making a couple of reduced coenzymes that are gonna go to the ETC and then produce some ATP later on. That's it, that is the link reaction. It's very quick, short, quick reminder of uh, mitochondrial structure. And then we're gonna look at the Krebs cycle in the next video. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.